Hi, it's Jessica Drummond here from the Integrative Women's Health Institute. I'm here with Dr. Joe Tata, founder of the Healing Pain Summit. And we're here to answer your questions about pain, to talk about chronic pain, to talk about the latest science in, uh, regarding chronic pain, how clinicians are starting to change our approach to chronic pain, and some suggestions and recommendations for how you can find your best uh, chronic pain relieving team um, by you know asking your clinicians certain questions. So first I wanna ask Joe, You've done two of these healing pain summits now, and you've interviewed dozens of global pain experts. You've been a clinician yourself for over 15 years. You've worked with thousands of patients with chronic pain. What have you learned? What has surprised you in the last couple of years about how pain treatment is evolving? Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, so the first summit, I, I, what I learned was that there are a lot of people out there, I think both clinicians as well as patients, that really are looking for a new message around pain. So obviously, there's a, as, as clinicians, as physical therapists and other practitioners, we know there's been a pain epidemic for a long time. And you know we've been trying to work toward that. But just recently, obviously, it's come to the news. Some people have died of opioids and things like that. But from the first summit, I really re I, what I realized and learned was that there is a, a big message that needs to be delivered. Um, from the second summit, which is, is going to air on September 12th, just a couple days away, what I've learned is that there's been a, a you know, definitely a, a more rapid movement over the over the course of the last year with the opioid epidemic, um, but that we're really not delivering the message to people of how to actually cure their pain. So we're saying that <clears throat> things like opioids and other medications and surgeries and injections don't work for people with chronic pain, but we're still we still haven't done a good job as clinicians and as a healthcare system to deliver the the, the message to exactly what does work. Yeah, I think that's a great point. You know, we, we have told people that opioids are addictive, that spine surgery in the literature essentially doesn't work. But we haven't given them tools or a better understanding of what it means to be in pain and what you can do to start relieving your own pain, even if you've been in chronic pain for months or years or decades because it is such a multidisciplinary approach. We know, you know, when, when Joe and I were in school, there were such a thing as pain receptors and that doesn't really exist anymore. So tell us what the paradigm is now regarding pain and how people can essentially begin, take a first few steps for finding relief for their pain and finding those practitioners who understand the updated clinical model of what we really know about pain, the, about the gut, the nervous system, and all of that. Yeah, it's a great question. So on my summit, there are gonna be a lot of people talking about kind of this big complex word called a biopsychosocial approach to pain. Mm -hmm. So basically what that means is that all of us have a very unique pain experience. So what caused pain in Jessica and what caused pain in me and what maybe has caused pain in you is very different based on the life you've lived, mm -hmm. um, what you've done to your body, both physically and through nutrition, as well as especially, and this is some of the things that are starting to, you know, the new information is that how has the brain changed? So how has stress caused your pain to um, change or, or be worse or intensify? How has what you've been told about pain or what you've been taught about pain affected your pain experience? Um, do you have a past trauma in your life that may have affected you adversely and you're still carrying that or something that you haven't worked through? So everyone's going to be talking about the biopsychosocial approach. And what's, to me, what's so exciting about that is that what, 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 what that really says is that you have to kind of integrate many different types of strategies to relieve chronic pain. So it can't just be the one thing. It can't just be the chiropractic adjustment. It can't just be the one physical therapy exercise or manual therapy. It can't just be gluten. Mm -hmm. It can't just be psychotherapy. There's a lot of different things that contribute to the pain experience that are unique to you. So part of um, finding your solution to pain is figuring out what your unique pain experience is and then starting to kind of work on it and, and you know, chisel it down and figure out what it takes in your life to alleviate it. And sometimes diet could be 80% of it mm -hmm. and movement's only 20%. And other times the, you know, the mental part could be 80% and the diet could only be 10%. So, you know, what I think is exciting about the work that Jessica does and that, that I do, we, we have started to integrate many different things into 
the care of our patients and how we teach clinicians to deal with pain. Yeah, and so for those watching this video who are clinicians, I think one of the frustrations for clinicians is that the biopsychosocial model of pain requires that we really do a very strong assessment, that we take the time to, and we actually, that we have the skills to listen to our client's pain story. And we've talked about how coaching skills, um, kind of behavioral therapy kinds of literature have helped contribute to the conversation. So for clinicians, what is your first recommendation that how would you suggest that a clinician start to approach their patients with chronic pain differently such that they have the opportunity, what are the assessment tools for figuring out, you know, in this particular client, is nutrition a big part of the problem? Is a past trauma a big part of the problem? Is a structural integrity issue like a muscle or joint injury part of the problem? What is the first step for clinicians? Yeah, well, so I, I think the first step is obviously doing a thorough evaluation, but that, that evaluation really has to include um, talking to your patient and trying to bring out in them what they think that their pain experience has been. Because a lot of times the, the patient has all the answers. We just have to listen. So we have to be really good at listening first and asking some key questions. Now from those questions, from that assessment, you, you may say, okay, this person obviously has pain related to inflammation because they have insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they have pain related to their sedentary lifestyle. Um, but really talking to patients and spending the time and listening to them is really what's needed first. Now the, the problem and the challenge with that is in our healthcare system, we do things very rapidly and we're very pressed for time as clinicians. Jessica and I have developed a different practice model where we spend a lot of time with people and we have the luxury of that, but we're very cognizant that um, our system doesn't function like that. And if we're going to get people out of pain, if we're going to turn the chronic pain experience around, if we're going to turn our chronic pain epidemic around, we're going to have to look at how we practice individuals as clinicians, we're going, to look at, we're going to have to start to look at how our systems are set up, how our medical systems are set up, mm -hmm. um, even how physicians are, are evaluating people. I mean, most people in pain are going to hit a orthopedic surgeon, or maybe a physiatrist, or maybe an OBGYN, and of course their primary care doctor, and most of those physicians really spend very little time with patients, so they don't really have the time to go through the history and to talk about the experience in depth. So, you know, that's really where people like us come in, in, into, into um, play. And I think that, you know, the message will start to spread and, and more and more physicians will say, okay, you need to see a physical therapist or another practitioner who obviously specializes in pain and can look at it as a, as a global phenomenon. Well, and I think physical therapists are very skilled in evaluating structurally uh, clients' pain complaints. But I think what's happening amongst the physical therapy profession itself, which I'm, I'm really encouraged by, is physical therapists, those who are really comfortable working with chronic pain, are starting to educate themselves and get continuing education on pain science, on how we talk about pain. You can actually have a different pain experience depending on the words that you use to describe your pain or even the words that your clinicians use to describe your pain. Um, and so that active listening of what the client's story is and then recognizing that, you know, I think you had a good example that you told me about before where, you know, your client at the same time that her pain began, she went through a lot of changes in her life. And how does that relate to physical pain sometimes? Yeah, so, you know, obviously we're talking about the psycho-emotional aspect there. So I was telling Jessica about a patient I had who um, over the course of probably about three months, she separated from her husband, got a divorce, and lost her job at the same time. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a lot of stress there at one time, and stress causes your nervous system to just, you know, really turn on. It's like, it's like sticking your finger in a socket. Like all of a sudden there's just a jolt of electricity, and that's kind of what, you know, massive amount of stress can do in your life. And in that case, you know, your brain is obviously sending signals to your body that outputs pain, and pain is always an output of the brain, no matter what type of pain you have. Um, but I, you know, I think in our patients, especially in today's society, in today's day and age, pain, uh, or I should say emotions and stress, is one of those things that can either cause the actual pain, or it can just ramp it up really intensely. So we really have to be cognizant of that when we're 
you know, talking to our patients. Um, you know, and I think, talking about women's health, so, mm -hmm. so Jessica's going to be day one, um, and actually interview one on the Healing Pain Summit, which I'm hosting on September 12th. And she's going to talk about women in pain and some of the challenges that women have around negotiating the healthcare system and actually having uh, other practitioners believe their pain. Because a lot of times women, especially those with fibromyalgia or other pain type syndromes, they'll go through many, many different practitioners. And a lot of times they'll come back and by the time they finally hit a physical therapist, they'll say, wow, you're the first one to listen to me. Most of the physicians thought that I was making it up, or it wasn't real, or I, was, or I was exaggerating it, or I was crazy. And I think the take home message there is if you're someone with pain and you're watching this, pain is always real. Pain is always real, there's always a real reason for it. And finding the right clinician, or the right education, or the right book, or the right online program can be the pathway to fit, helping you figure out exactly what the pain generator is in your life. Yeah, and I think we have a quick question. I'm going to look yeah, really quick. I'm um, yeah, so great question. Kim is asking, so how can we empower patients in their own care? The Western, you know, model of healthcare essentially dictates us as clinicians and your doctor and your nutritionist, anyone else, uh, as the, you know, know-it-all and, <laughs> and that the patient is the victim. And I think this is a really important message because when a patient doesn't recognize that the journey is actually hers. So if, if you are the one with the physical pain, you know, whether there's an emotional component, whether anyone believes you you have pain or not, you know you have pain and that pain is real. And you are the owner of your pain journey. What's challenging from, you know, to, to rec one recommendation I have in terms of shifting your mindset as a person in pain is that as you go from clinician to clinician to clinician, don't go looking for the silver bullet answer. It's very rare that there's one thing that you just have to find the right professional who knows exactly where to put you know, the injection or exactly which trigger point to touch or exactly you know, which nutrient supplement to give you. Those kinds of silver bullets don't generally work in chronic pain, chronic fatigue. What does work is for you to take ownership of the journey and go to each of those professionals, build a small team. Hopefully some of the people on your team will be like Joe and I that have you know, been to school for the last million years. <laughs> <Not> um, <sure. laughs> right, no more. But so they'll have some multiple, you know, perspectives on this. But think of it as when you're going from clinician to clinician and building your team that each one has something to offer you. And I think that's what Joe has created that's so amazing. The book that he's written that's coming out, the program that he's created, all of the online stuff that Joe and I have created, we've done that because we want to empower you to take this journey one step at a time. Look at all the things that you can do to really impact and reduce the severity, the intensity, the duration of your own pain. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point. I think, you know, partially because of the society we live in, we think there's going to be a pill for every ill. So there's going to be a pill that solves everything. And I think the opioid epidemic is, is the best example of that. But the message we're trying to deliver is that we're trying to give you the tools. So when you do walk into an orthopedics office or a physical therapist, mm -hmm or whatever practitioner you're seeing, is that you have some tools and you have some knowledge so that you're gathering all this information. And now you're gonna to start to apply that to yourself, to your body, to your brain, to your life, to your family even. Mm -hmm. So now you see that not only that you're changing your life and you're helping your pain, but you're also affecting all those around you, which I think is the most powerful thing. So the days of going to kind of the man in the white coat, and Jessica and I have both worn white coats, we're part of that white coat kind of phenomena. The days of going to the man in the white coat and getting the, you know, the one fix is really gone. And, and that really exists nowhere more than in the pain world, in the pain space. Um, you know, yes, fish oil can help things like rheumatoid arthritis. But you can't just throw fish oil on top of someone's poor diet or on top of their stress or on top of their history of trauma and abuse. There's going to have to be a lot of different things we can, you know, to talk about. Um, so that's, you know, really what we're trying to do is empower people first with some knowledge. And then with that knowledge, you can then take it and, and apply it to your life. 
And in my summit, you know, I have, I have physicians, I have nutritionists, I have physical therapists, I have pain psychologists, so I, I really have brought people on that can give you a little bit of information about everything, and you can start to say to yourself, okay, I think my pain experience is due to 60% nutrition, 30% lack of movement, and whatever, I'm not doing the math correctly, 20% 20, 20 <laughs> you know, yeah. psychological issues. Um, but there's always a piece of, mo of all those as uh, uh, facets in, in your pain experience, in, in, in your healing process as well. Yeah, so don't get frustrated if you've already you know, done the elimination diet, or you've already let go of gluten and you still have pain, or you've already um, had a back surgery and you still have pain. Yeah. Don't get frustrated because what Joe has created through his chronic pain programs and you know, what we do for women with chronic pelvic pain is it's really a systematic approach of, you know, looking at your life. Okay, yes, maybe you already are on an anti-inflammatory diet, but you're not moving very much no. because you might be just afraid to move because your pain is limiting your movement. So maybe you do need to work with a really supportive, highly skilled physical therapist or fitness professional who can move you in the direction of safe movement so you don't have to worry about becoming re-injured. So as you walk through a systematic approach, and that's why we, we do this work online, that's why we've spent the last hour and a half <laughs> figuring out technology, because we want you to own your healing journey. So any last words, anything else you want to tell us about your summit, Joe, before we wrap up today? Um, first of all, thanks for being with us, and thanks for talking about um, you know, pain and, and the pain experience. Um, you know, obviously I'd like people to join the summit and to share with your friends and family. So if you go to the summit homepage, it's www.thehealingpainsummit.com. So it's thehealingpainsummit.com. And Jessica's on there, I have, I have 30 experts. And really what we need to do is, I can't do this alone, and Jessica can't do this alone. So we're basically starting a movement to change the paradigm around pain. There's a lot of things that need to change, everything from training practitioners, to making the public more aware, to changing our big medical systems, to changing our um, you know, marketing from, from, from pharmaceutical companies. So when you share this summit, you're not just sharing Jessica and, and, and mine's information, you're sharing 30 speakers that are trying to deliver a message of hope and healing to help people recover from chronic pain, basically. And you know, the online space is a great place to do this because the message travels really fast. It's really difficult to walk into a big hospital and say, hey, we need to set up an integrated pain clinic right now. We need to bring a, a, a psychologist and a physical therapist and a nutritionist. You know, the truth is we don't have enough clinicians to treat the over 100 million people who have pain. So we're gonna have to figure out ways like this to reach the masses, to reach people, to really deliver the message to you and, help, and you know, get you better so that you can live a life that's pain-free and healthy where you can enjoy exercise and activity and um, your friends and family and sex and all the things that living a pain-free life has as a benefit. All right, well, thank you so much. We're so glad you were here with us today. And our, our closing message will, is simply that there is hope for you. Uh, we, there is a lot of information out there. A lot of it's new and your team of practitioners may not know it, but you can help educate them and we're here to help you better understand your pain. So below this video, feel free to continue to ask us some questions over the next few days share your insights and thanks so much joe it's been really fun Thank you. being here this has been great so we're doing this out of my small little new york city apartment and it looks like an awesome studio but we're just having some tea and chatting so it's been great and we hope to see you again and thanks for watching and we'll, we'll be in there to answer some questions for you all right thanks so much bye-bye bye-bye